It's part 13 of the Batmobile build. In this episode, I'm going to make the front bumpers and the side skirts uh, and also the wheel arches. And then I'm going to move on to finishing the jet engine intake. After that, I'm going to make the, the windscreen and the surround of the windscreen. And if I've got enough time left before the end of this episode, I'm going to make the uh, the engine mount, uh, the mult, oh, goodness, what's it called? It's the support for the engine. It's not even an engine, is it? It's a motor. It's an electric motor. I'm going to make a support for that anyway. It's just cold in this garage. I can't even think straight. I better get working and warm myself up. Let's get making. Before I fit them, I've got to I've got to draw around here onto a new piece of wood so I can make uh, the front the front spoilers. And once I've made the spoiler, I can make a small wheel arch flare that fits all around here. Yesterday I fitted these side skirts, I've uh, made these wheel arches and I've got this front bumper, fitted them on both sides, I've put body filler in all the places that need smoothing out, got body filler everywhere <laughs> and then I went on to make this, this is a nose cone support, um, this has got to go on here and this has got to be cut at an angle, same angle as what this is at. So that when it's all fitted the nose cone will sit in the centre and it'll be nice and level. And then what I have to do is I've got to make all the splines for this engine or the, the blades. And once that's done, hopefully, hopefully by the end of the day everything will be finished up front of the car. So fingers crossed. <laughs>
today I'm, I'm going to try and fit the windscreen and um, and the side screens. To do that, but I've already I've already cut this slot. I've cut it at an angle so that so that the windscreen sits at an angle. But I've got to make a frame for the side screens, and it's got to be a frame sturdy enough so that when somebody's climbing in and out, even if they pull on it, it doesn't break. As usual, I'm not exactly sure how I'm going to do it, but I'm going to try something, and if it looks right, I'll carry on, and if it doesn't look right, well, I'll start again. out of this one piece but it's so close that even well, it just just fits which means even one mistake and it's scrap so I've got to be careful Yesterday, when I'd finished working on the car, I just put a little bit of paint on. Um, so this morning, the paint's dry. I've sanded it down, and what what that does, it shows up any little imperfections, little little places that need a bit of body filler. Uh, what I'm hoping to do is each day when I finish working on the car now, is I'm going to add some more paint. The day after, I can sand it down as I've done today, and over the next few days or the next week. I'm hoping to get the car to a standard where it's ready for applying a layer of spray paint. Um, on top of the spray paint, then I can add a layer of a lacquer, and that should give me should give me a nice finish on this car. Fingers crossed.
just found myself a new problem. When I fitted, when I fitted this battery tray holder, I glued it in position. But before I glued it in position, what I should have done was cut it. But I forgot to cut it. Which means now, when this sits on the shaft, it's going to foul on there. That means I've got to move everything and I've got to cut this now. It's not something I really wanted to do now. I wanted to do that before, but hey, I made a mistake. Never mind, it's got to be done, so somehow I'll do it. Now, because I made a mistake, I have to do some calculating. Let's draw everything. The base, 10 millimeters thick. The drive shaft, which is 53 millimeters from the top of the base. This is the piece for the battery holder, 40 millimeters from the center of the drive shaft. The sprocket with the chain is 117, but just for clearance, I'm going to say 120. Half of that being 60. And now I know how far I've got to do everything, how deep I've got to do everything. The width of the chain is nine millimeters. So the groove that I need to cut, it's got to be a minimum of 10. Maybe 12, maybe 12, that'd be even better. The height of the battery wall is 100 millimeters. Okay, so what I'm going to do I'm going to drill a hole through the bottom of the battery box. I'm going to saw down both sides. Then I'm going to put a piece like this on the top to strengthen it again. Yep. great plan and you've just seen me draw it but when I was actually doing the work I found a better way to do it so what I've done is I've cut the battery wall into two pieces and I've cut a groove into the floor of the car that means now when I fit this piece it'll fit in freely absolutely loads of space all the way around it including the chain when I fit the chain as well and uh, the only thing I don't like is the fact that this is a little bit too close to this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to extend this bracket. I'm going to raise it up a bit so that the electric motor sits a bit higher. And that way, if ever the chain needs tensioning, I can just loosen the bolts, lift up the motor and tighten the bolts again. Right guys, if I've got some welding rods and enough material, I'm going to carry on making that bracket. But this episode's been long enough as it is, so I'll let you guys shoot off, make yourself a brew, or go and have your tea, or whatever you're doing, while I carry on working. 
And remember, if there's anything you need to know, ask an expert. And I'm no expert. Catch you in the next episode.